The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 19th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up the, that phone. would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this right now. Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ and Russell are down. 78 points in the Dow, 9 points in the S&P, 2 points in the uh, NASDAQ, 109 points in the Russell. The semis and the trannies are up slightly. 2 points for the uh, semis. The trannies are up 22 points. To the downside again, gold's off $4, silver's down 18 pennies, light sweet crude is flat, natural gas off 6 cents, 30 treasury printing out 108.31, that's off 10 ticks. Leading a charge, dollar-wise, the upside, Netflix, big move there, 15%, $52 move. Lindsay Corporation, 23%, $25 move. Asimil Holdings, $14 move, 2.5% service now, a 2% move for 11 bucks. MicroStrategy, a 3% move, nearly 10 bucks to the upside. To the downside, it's Booking Holdings off 46, Lamb Research down 32, O'Reilly Automotive down 29, Eli Lilly 25, Tesla's down 21. That's an 8% move to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But let's begin our day by taking a look and see where we're at with regard to market breadth for the S&P and the NASDAQ 100. If we take a look at the ES Mini right now, you are market breadth bearish for its 30-minute time frame. 119 instruments above, 186 below. Let's check on the NASDAQ 100, see if it is market breadth negative for its 30-minute time frame. And the answer is it is just slightly 28 above, 34 below. So 28 above means trading above resistance. 34 below means trading below support. TAS market profile resistance and support. If we take a look at the 60 minute, the 240, the daily and the weekly, we are all negative when it comes to the S&P 500. If we take a look at so the S&P is negative across the board. The Nasdaq is also yeah, it's also bearish across the board. Weekly, now daily, the 240 and the 60. So sellers should be able to step on the gas here. We're going to have to go take a look at those charts and just see if there's any other signals out there that we need to pay attention to. But first, before we do that, let's start with the larger time frame. So we're going to switch panels here as soon as I can do that. And we're going to take a look at the daily and the weekly time frames for the equity future contract out here. Just remind ourselves where are we at? What are they doing on these time frames? So if we take a look at the ES Mini, ES Mini has a buy the D point pattern. A close today below that oscillator and change line. So the profile here, if you notice, is different than the profile level that we took a look at when I did my market update. That profile level on the market update, the E signal set of charts using the same set of data is at uh, 4333 but when you look at this chart it's 4255 we use both of those numbers so you may if you're listening in at the uh, 11 o'clock update i said if we get a close below 4333 4255 would be our next target out area and that's because that's where that profile resides i said if it closed below that then the target would be the buy the d point 
which is that little bullish piercing candle right there. And that low would be the secondary level of support. And that would be down at the 40... 42.35.50 level. And 42.35.50 is the exact same price as that bullish amber candle on the weekly time frame that, con that confirmed a Gartley buy pattern. The issue here to the upside, clearly, for the S&P 500, the ES Mini is 44.24. That's the bottom of that weekly profile. That's the level that price would have to overcome in order to suggest that there is some maybe legs to the rally. If we take a look at the NQ out here, the NQ's got a TD9 count bottom. Now, in the case of the NQ, its profile levels are the same on both sets of charts out here. Yesterday was a close below that oscillator change line. Remember, it's trading also below the center of its bearish structure daily profile. Odds now really favor a move down to 14,676, the bottom of that profile. Below that will be a CD9 count bottom that resides at 14,586. On a weekly time frame, no bottom signal, just simply a swing point that is held out there. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow has a buy the D point pattern. The Dow is stronger than the ES and the NQ simply because price is trading above its oscillator and change line. So if the Dow loses that battle, and that battle is right at about where its center line is at of its profile, 33,658. So that's the number we're going to go ahead and call it. If you get a close below that, odds would favor a move to 33. 148. Yesterday, the day before, the day before that, we saw the Dow try to take out the resistance where the sellers were at. They were unable to do that. Those sellers reside at 34,167. We take a look at the, uh, the uh, weekly time frame. It needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern. On the Russell 2000, it's got a Roads momentum indicator bottom. That bottom would be negated if price were to close below 17,2430. If it does that, and it closes actually below 172070. So we've got two different levels. If it closes below 172070 tomorrow, that'll negate its TD9 count bottom. And that'll suggest a strong further move to the downside. So that's what we are looking at. We take a look at the daily and the weekly time frame charts for the four equity future contract. If we do a little bit deeper dive into the NQ as an example, we can see that a key level of support has held, and that's on the four and the five hour charts. That's at 14,950 uh, and 14,965. Those are the TD9 count breakout levels. We take a look at a two hour time frame chart here. The two hour time frame chart negated a TD9 count bottom. We just have price consolidating with inside its profile, resistance at 15,098, support 14,957. 60-minute time frame chart. Rose momentum indicator bottom. We know it's market breadth bearish. The price closes below its oscillator and change line. It's currently printed at 15.002. So let's call it 15,000. Well, I was going to say, actually, the number that you need to use for the 60-minute time frame chart is the bottom of its new profile. That's at 14,988. If price closes below 14,988, then we get all the way back down to this morning's low at 4 o'clock. And that was at the 14,937 level out there. 30-minute time frame has got a, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That turned into an A to B equals CD, but it doesn't look like that pattern completed. Uh, price right now on a 30-minute basis, which is also TAS market breadth negative, is trading below profile and a red oscillator and change line. Uh, odds are favoring as we take a look at these charts here. We're still going to leave it with this key number here. I'm going to go with 14,988.50. If price closes below that, you're likely to see the NQ continue to head lower and test the overnight low. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the equity futures. We've got some requests out here, a few, I believe. One to take a look at CELH from KJ, KGJ, the VIX from InnoVisual, CBX from uh, G Motion, and URA for Jimmy D. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's get to our first request out here. This one's coming in from um, KGJ. Try to say that three times, or at least DB can. And so as we take a look at this instrument, let me actually get my other screen going, too, just to make sure. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, this is going to be CELH is what we're looking at. CELH. It's going off my keyboard here. CEL. Oh, it's weird. Sorry, folks. Just a little technical glitch that I've been having. I think I need to shut the whole system down. But we take a look at the Celsius Holdings Inc. right now. We can see that it's trading above its uh, daily profile. In fact, it's forming an A to B equals CD to the upside. So let's just see at the B point, which would be the trading day of October the 11th. It did volume there of um, 891,000 shares. When that B point was passed, it was October 17th, 1.3 million shares. So what you have here first with regard to the patterns is you have a A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So let's draw in the A to B point, and then we'll just simply go ahead and we'll copy this, and this will give us uh, our, our measured move equal to the one-to-one. -one. I'm trying to copy and grab it. Man, this keyboard is really – give me a second here. Let me try doing this. Let me turn this off, turn this off, turn that back on, turn this back on. Let's see if we can do it now. Um, wow. What the Sam heck is going on here? Okay, so I'm going to go with pl game plan B if I can here. I'm going to move that point of, wow, if I can grab this. I, I, I really do have a game plan B here. It's just not working. Okay, so we're going to go to Stevie's other game plan B. Sorry about that. Uh, that means we're going to switch over to my other system just so we can take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So if you give me just a moment, we'll get over there. And here it's going to be a piece of cake. So we're looking at the uh, price projection levels. That's what the A to B equals CD tool really provides us with, is price projection areas for us to be looking at with regard to where price could or should turn. And here the one-to-one -one price projection gets you up to 177.62. Now, the retracement there was a 618. It was 61.6% retracement. So no clue as to – so typically when you get a 0.618 retracement, 
786 retracement. The A to B equals CD pattern completes at about the one-to-one -one area. So it looks like you're getting up towards that range. Now, the reason why I say could or should form an A to B equals CD is because you wait for the market to communicate that to you. And the way that it does that, the bears will show up, the sellers will show up, and the sellers would have to form some type of bearish reversal candle. Now, I just use seven of them because those seven have the most meaning out there. As opposed, It's easy to remember seven really 14 but it's really seven because you got the bullish and the bearish but once you know one you know the other side so we just kind of make it easy for you the other 45 or 65 or 95 different candlesticks that are out there i haven't found much use for them others may have but with regard to the tools that you and i use here each day don't need those so you'd be waiting for some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm a top now i don't know if you're in this uh, or not uh, but you do have that a to b equal c to the upside now if price spikes above the high from a couple of days ago, that was October 17th, and that high was 175.63. If price can spike above that today, tomorrow, even the next day, what you could get or should get here is a TD9 count top. So there's two different patterns that are in place. Today's going to become bar number eight. But the bar number eight here, unless it pokes above, just has a poke above 175.63, even if it's bar number eight, doesn't guarantee us of a TD9 count that's going to complete. Bar number eight needs to be the valid count, which means either to the upside or the downside, it's got to be the high of the count in either direction in order to get us that 90% rule that completes those TD9 count patterns. So if we take a look at the weekly chart, as long as we're here, we're back inside its profile. Your resistance level here is 178.15. If price can close above 178.15, then Celsius holdings probably we does have some legs and you could see it move all the way up to the 206 85 range monthly chart if i just simply switch back to my other uh, set of charts out here what you'll see is that price is pulled back to test its green oscillator and change line and as long as price holds that level that's a bullish message by the way why because the green oscillator and change line tells us that the price oscillator the difference between the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average that that is above zero and it is rising when the line is green it's rising those are bullish conditions i developed this tool specifically to be able to help us understand when a retracement was just a retracement back to support and it works for all different time frames so in the monthly time frame we know that uh, celsius holdings pulled back and found support where it should have and that was at the 150 80 ish level out there so overall stock chart looks pretty good um, you've got that A to B equals CD, a potential TD9 count as well. Not much more that I can provide to you. So I hope that helps you out, KJ, KGJ out there. I'm going to struggle with that one. No intention. Uh, in a visual, wants to take a look at spot volatility index. So let's switch some cha uh, charts out here. Go take a look at that. I don't know what specifically you know, would like to look at. So I'll just throw out a couple of different things for you. Uh, there was a question that came in, I think it was last week, uh, and it was from John inside the Tiger's Den. And he was really asking about the 50-day exponential moving average and um, and the ES Mini or the S&P 500. So what I've got up here on my chart right now, the very bottom portion of the chart is the uh, spot volatility index. The red line is the 50-day exponential moving average. So these green and red rectangles, boxes, or what have you, they are identifying periods when the spot volatility index was below the 50-day. So if you just start on the very left-hand side out here, what you'll see is that when uh, spot volatility index is below its 50-day exponential moving average, odds favor a move higher to sideways. When price is above the 50-day expense moving average, the little rectangle, red rectangle right next to that, that tells us the market wants to move lower to sideways. So you can see how this works. You can see why I use that 50-day as a guideline as to what the intention of the market is. Right now, the intention of the market, and we're in this little red area out there, is price has been above its red oscillator, has been above its 50-day exponential moving average since about uh september 20th out there so that this this rectangle may have to be redrawn and just expanded out but that's the first thing that i would take a look at with regard to the spot volatility index if we take a look at the spot volatility index with regard to other tools that are out here well what else can we learn from the spot volatility index you know what we can learn we can learn this here when you have those one day rates of change those one day rates of change out here uh where does stevie have them there we go. So here's your one-day rates of change out here. Um, and what you typically have, you take a look at the last one, you know. 
So the last one day rate of change above plus 10%. So I look at the plus 10 and a minus 10%. The last above 10% was a trading day of October 13th. When you get a one day rate of change above plus 10%, you typically see a bottom or a bounce in the very next trading session. What did we see? We saw that bottom slash bounce out there. So that's a cool way. Does that tool always work? What it does, how it really works, and it's real intended use, is when you get that is to be if you trade futures, especially if you trade the ES mini out there. If you trade futures, what this is telling you is to expect some type of rally, usually overnight, or usually it starts by 3.30 in the morning when uh, Europe is fully on board and trading out there. But sometimes it can start taking place right at about the 6 o'clock time frame. You're typically looking for a road momentum indicator bottom out there. So more times than not, even if the following day closes lower, you had that intraday rally, which is pretty helpful because to get a one-day rate of change above plus 10%, the market is finishing usually at its lows. It looks pretty miserable out there. And then there's an overnight rally that typically takes place. So, you know, I hope that that helped you out with regard to the spot volatility. Right now, again, we are above the 50-day exponents moving average. That gives sellers the edge. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back 
folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Chevron. CBX is the ticker symbol. Trading right now at about 169.41 40, 40, uh, out there. And we take a look at CBX. I'm going to start on the uh, right-hand side of the chart. We're going to look at the longer term first, the monthly chart. And what we can see is that the resistance level here, uh, G-Motion that you're watching, is 172.17. If price can close above that, then that's going to signal to you and I that price wants to go target that 189.68 level. So 172 and change. That number's going to change. Why don't you make it 172.40? Price closed above 172.40. That would be a bullish signal. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, a close tomorrow above 168.96 negates a TD9 count top out there. Now, it's got resistance at the 170.20 level. So 170.20 is another area that you'd like to see price close above in order to suggest it wants to make a move to 187.81. And now we're at the daily time frame. The daily time frame, the positive is price right now, yesterday tested and rejected the top of its daily profile 169.16. It's taking that as we speak again. The volume at the swing point that it's targeting is a swing point from September 28th. The volume on that swing point was 7.1 million shares. In the first two hours of trading, you've done 2 million shares. So it's pretty close from a volume standpoint. But if price can close inside that swing point, in order to do that, it needs to close above 169.43. I would say odds favor a move up to the top of that uh, swing point area. And that level is up at the 171.70 area. So, G-Man, I hope that our G-Motion, I hope that that provided you with the information you were looking for. If not, let me know what else you need. I'll be happy to get that to you. Let's go to our first caller. It is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Excellent. Steve, I thought I'd jump right in and ask you about uh, the metals and the GDX. Steve, uh, we've been uh, all watching, and you've been documenting for us the very abrupt reversal off that October 6th bottom, that just uh, parenthetically recall, that was the day that the Commerce Department issued um, uh, employment statistics. Uh, gold and silver, I think, may, I think both made lower lows, reversed higher, and we've just been off to the races since. Um, yes. And as you've been mentioning yesterday and today, a Tom DeMarc pattern that you use uh, very routinely is coming into play. And just for the benefit of your listeners, of course, uh, Steve, you and I have talked about this for a decade, but I had uh, first been introduced to Tom DeMarc's work 35 years ago. Yes. And that TD9 count uh, pattern that you uh, often mention is Tom DeMarc's uh, strong nine uh, trading day rally pattern. And that pattern is one which is defined by nine consecutive closes, each close above the close four days prior. Correct. Okay. Now, with that just having uh, been defined clearly, you are observing in COMEX gold, silver, and the GDX that the daily chart is in the process of completing one of those TD nine count patterns. Now, Steve, you and I all we know that um, T uh, that a thrust pattern, a, a TD nine count pattern, can resolve any number of ways. We can get a pullback. We can rally uh, uh, immediately thereafter and do a recycle which is what Tom DeMarc gave, uh, named a, a, a pattern where another TD9 count occurred immediately thereafter. Yes. And then there's variants that he's come up with that he called TD combos and TD sequential patterns. Yes. So that is a quick tutorial just of the terminology that, that you're using and that I've been involved with for 35 years. Yes. My question to you, Steve, is specifically this. Once a TD9 count pattern is achieved, has your use thereof signaled or uh, given you the experience to say, hey, the odds are X that after a TD9 count pattern, we do pull back or, uh, or not? That's my question. Yeah, you know, that's a great question. 
And what I will simply share with you is Dave White and I were on the mission of solving that uh, question. And, uh, and we were literally like a day away before his passing. In fact, we probably, probably solved that that day, that afternoon. Um, cause what we were, so, so I don't, so I don't have that answer. And that answer right now is locked up in heaven somewhere. Um, so the way that I take a look at this is just simply try to use whatever other tools we have. So that would say, go to short term timeframes to see if this is likely to take hold. So right now what we got up on our chart screen here is we have the daily time frame for gold, the weekly time frame for gold, and the daily time frame for silver and the uh, GDX out there. And as John was so kind to point out, you'll see that yesterday was bar number eight, if you're watching this on Tiger TV or inside the den, yesterday was bar number eight. In order for bar number nine to complete today, price just simply has to close above the close four bars earlier. Well, that would be bar number five on my system. And that close out there, and that looks likely today. That close, though, is 1941.50. As long as price closes above that, we will have a confirming TD9 count top today. Now, in the TD9 count pattern sequence, uh, the bar following bar number nine, either to the upside or the downside, depending on which, whether we're looking at the top or bottom, in this case here would be the upside, that's when the pattern can complete. So it's really sort of a TD10 pattern out there uh, that we really want to take a look at. So the high of the pattern may not be yesterday, may not even be today, and could be tomorrow. So that's the first thing that I would look at. Now, in the case of the, uh, in the case, in this instance here, we had silver provide that TD9 count signal. Yesterday, it confirmed that. Today is just simply that confirmation. Now, in the case of silver here, there's also a new profile, John, that is formed or is attempting to form. And it looks pretty solid. And that support level is where price got down to this morning, which was 2280. And resistance is up at 2331. Its pattern will complete today. Right now, it's yesterday's high. That's the key level. And if price takes that out, it says we are going to continue its move to the upside. 2349 is the price that close would need to close above. Its next level of resistance then would be 2392. In the case of the GDX, just like silver, it's also attempting to form a new profile. Now, price right now is testing the center of this bearish structured profile out here. Ideally, price won't even close inside here today. But if it does, you really want to see 2903 hold. If 2903 does not hold, odds favor price pulling back to 2818. Now, John, you've heard me say many times, I'm sure, when we get these TD9 counts, I give the direction that price is then going to go ahead and make a move towards that oscillator and change line. That's something that David and I did resolve and what we saw that occurring, we saw that happening 90% of the time when we got a TD9 count bottom where price pulled back and at least tested that oscillator and change line. So, but, but what I also have are these profile levels out there. So whereas I would have just said to you automatically look into the GDX, price is gonna pull back to 2818, I've gotta take into account these profile levels as well. So uh, you're welcome to stay on. Uh, if, if you'd like, I know I wasn't able to answer your question as specific, but right now we're trying to figure out where is price likely to pull back to. But I'll further answer that question whether you hang out or not. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So the uh, perfect uh, John John went ahead and hung up, but we're going to still stick still stick with this idea here just for a moment, and that is how do you know when a TD nine count top or bottom is likely, in fact, the top or bottom? If you take a look at the two minute time frame chart out here, the two minute time frame chart for gold gold futures we're looking at it's a perfect example of the nine nine count that uh, John had mentioned. This forms a TD nine count. It does it on bar number uh, the bar following bar number nine. We end up with a, a one bar pullback and then boom, it's back off to the races only to do what? To finish another TD9 count as it did at 1140 just two minutes ago, a couple minutes ago. So now if that high gets taken out and that high is up at 1972.20, that tells you that the rally is going to extend itself. Now, even on a two minute basis here, I would be looking for if I was going to intraday trade this, I'd be looking for some type of signal. Well, the first signal on a two minute basis, the reason I've gone down to these charts here, two, five and 30 is because the daily time frame is the one that has that top. So if we take a look at this, if we're going to get a turn on a daily time frame, we're going to first see it on the intraday charts here. Well, on the intraday charts here, if you look at this two minute chart, there's one pattern that we see where there's only been two bars that have been taken out, the lows of the prior bars that have been taken out. Otherwise, the lows haven't even been touched with the highs being taken out. Just from a, you don't even have to be a technical trader. That's not even a technical pattern. That is just telling you that you've got more buyers than sellers because the sellers weren't even able to get the bar down to at least the prior bars low out there. So, it, it, you know, I would say that the turn is going to take place on the intraday charts first. And uh, um, you're very skilled at this, John. So I would just look to those to help assist with is the daily time frame TD9 count pattern now, in fact, showing us that it's getting ready to reverse out there. So thanks for the questions. I hope that that helped really everybody out there. Let's go back to some of our questions. The next one that came in, I believe, is to take a look at uh, uranium. U-R-A is a ticker symbol. And this is for Jimmy D. And we take a look at uranium out here. All that I've got right now, Jimmy, is a uh, price trading with inside his profile, attempting to take out the top of his profile, I believe. The top of their profile is at 25.93. And we're at about 25.94. Of course, I've got a little bit of a data feed issue out here. So URA is really printing out, or at least the last trade fired off at uh, 25.83, not 25.94. So it's just it found resistance at the top of that profile. The level that uranium or URA needs to close above is 2611. That's that green oscillator and change line. And if price can close above 2611, you're back up towards those recent highs. When we take a look at the daily time frame. Here is a TD9 count on a weekly basis. Remember, 
I shared with you that um, the studies that Dave and I were able to do that 90% of the time when you form a TD9 count, which is what happened on the weekly basis, price is going to pull back and test that oscillator and change line. That's exactly what happened uh, the week of October the 6th out here. Now, price has held that level. So what's its condition? Its condition is neutral. It's not bullish. I would say it's more bullish than it is bearish. But you got a TD9 count. Support is held. So on the weekly basis, it is a neutral signal. On a monthly time frame, the signal here is bullish. Why? Because it's inside a bullish structured monthly profile, it's above the center. It's above a green oscillator and change line. Uranium should be able to make its way up to 3016. So that's what I see when I take a look at the uranium charts. Right now, the key level for you to observe, two key levels are going to be 2593, the top of that profile, and then 2610 or thereabouts, that green daily oscillator and change line out there. So Jimmy, I hope that that provides you with the information that you were looking for the next question coming in from phil and phil wants to take a look at omcl omcl is make sure i'm on the right screen here i am it is omnicell and omnicell is one of these stocks here that took out yesterday's low never got to yesterday's high out there so certainly that's a bearish signal but what omnicell really needs to do it's pretty stretched and by pretty stretched it when it gets stretched like that, you generate a road momentum indicator signal. Now, in order to generate a bottom pattern, you need to see a bullish reversal candle. If we get that, that's a road momentum indicator bottom and would tell you that price should then target the bottom of its profile, 43.36 out there. If it can get above that, 44.53. The weekly chart has no bottom signal. Maybe there's an A to B equals CD pattern. If there was a weekly bullish reversal candle, that would confirm, yeah, there's an A to B equals CD. But he's a bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. The monthly chart is also bearish. Uh, uh, in fact, the monthly chart is suggesting to you and I that Omnicell wants to get to about 35 bucks, Phil. So I don't see much in this as we speak. I don't see any kind of bottoms. Not that one can't form two minutes from now. But as we speak right now, there's nothing in the cards that suggests that Omnicell has attained any kind of bottom whatsoever. So I hope that that helped out with regard to that. If there was some other piece of information you needed, just please let me know. Let's go on to our next request, which is coming from uh, Captain Triage. Captain Triage wants to take a look at Disney. So as we take a look at Disney, what we know about it is that right now, price is trading with inside its daily profile. So your support levels are 82.23, that's the bottom of the profile, 83.55, that happens to be the oscillator and change line, and then the resistance zone, which is between 84.32 and 85.72. What I don't have out here is any kind of a topping pattern other than a double top, so to speak, with price making its way back to a prior set of swing points that were back in September 15th. So what I'd be watching here, Captain Triage, it's going to need a little triage work if price closes below that red oscillator and change on in the daily time frame. And then that triage ought to bandage itself up at about 82.23. And if price closes below that, well, then that's a bad scene. And that tells us that you're likely headed back to the recent lows in October out there. Now, on a weekly basis, what Disney did was it generated last uh, two weeks ago a road's momentum indicator bottom. You had a nice key reversal bar, bullish engulfing candle session when price was already stretched. In fact, it already had a road's momentum indicator bottom that still is intact, the one that formed between September, the week of September 8th and 15th out there. Do two bottoms make a difference? No. What makes a difference is being able to get over res uh, resistance. And resistance here is at 86.14 and 88.70. Now, in a monthly time frame, it's bad news bears out there. That is unless it generates a bullish reversal candle, and it could. It's got a bullish engulfing as we speak right now. Still a little bit too early in the month to be able to make that call. But if it does generate that, then that's going to give you a buy the D point pattern, and that should then take us up to its red oscillator and change line. That's up at 88.49. So overall, Disney right now, things look okay. Uh, but if you get a close really between 82 23 then you've got some problems in River City. So Captain Triage, I hope that that helped you out. Let's go to our next request out here. Actually, I don't even have that in, so it's ICII. -I -I. This is for ELO inside the Tiger's Den. There's two other requests I know of that we've got, and we'll certainly get to those before the end of the show. One is for Microsoft, one is for Apple. Uh, ICII, just waiting for these charts here. LCII, ah, oh, thank you. So uh, appreciate that, because ICII wasn't picking up diddly. So thank you, ELO. And let's see if we can get uh, LCII to populate. While that's doing it, I'm going to look at it on my other charts out here, LCII, which is trading out at about 114.32, LCII. Jeez, this keyboard. Good Lord. 
Um, all right, so right now, you've got a consolidation with inside his profiles in between support and resistance. Support out here, 113.66. Resistance is the range of 116.66 to 118.16. If you close below 113.66, mm, then the next area of potential support is 104.46. You have to go all the way over to the monthly chart to be able to see that out there. Now, price, if it closed below the bottom of that profile, it would also be below the daily oscillator and change line. And that would certainly suggest reaching into the swing point. Now, the swing point back here, which was also wave seven bottom when this formed a bottom out there, courtesy of the Chapman wave, that swing point ranges from anywhere from 11174 at the high, 10614 uh, at the low, but that would become the target area with a close below 113.66. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. I have up on my screen out here. I wanted to make sure that if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, beautiful TD9 count bottom. 
price ran all the way up to resistance. That resistance level was the bottom of its profile. That matches the top of the daily profile resistance level. So that's a real strong area of resistance, that 118 and change. It's 118.54 on the weekly, 118.16 on the uh, daily. So I just wanted to share that with you. Before we go take a look at uh, Microsoft for Nancy out here, a quick peek on uh, Microsoft. What do we have? Microsoft still has its TD9 count top. That gets negated, Nancy. If price can close the day above 333.63. That's a possibility. Now, if it closes above 333.63, it negates that signal and then would suggest to move up to 337.40. So watch today's action since you're above it. We've been above it a couple different times since that pattern is formed, and each time by day's end, it gets rejected. Maybe that's telling us something. Let's go to our next request from G-Man. That's to take a look at Apple out here. There's nothing else that I really see inside the uh, charts by, all the way. Uh, by the way, Nancy, with regard to Microsoft, on a 30-minute time frame chart, no topping signal, just a sideways consolidation pattern out here so you're headed up towards the top of that consolidation as we speak right now now let's go take a peek at um apple out here so let's get the apple chart up as we take a look at it what's it signaling to us right now it's really trying to hold support after that TD9 count top, that's that red oscillator and change on. Remember, 90% of the time you get a TD9 count top or bottom. What's price do? Gets that oscillator and change line. For reasons I don't understand, I don't need to understand it. I just need to know that that's what unfolds out there. So if that level fails, then we're likely to see a move to 170.82. Lastly, just for the few seconds to go, to get through everything for KGJ Google. What do we know about Google? You've got a TD9 count top and a sideways consolidation with inside its profile. That's between 137.91 at 141.49. Folks, have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you on Fantastic Friday. Be safe out there. Have a terrific Thursday.